What's up, YouTube? So it's no secret that AI has been in the news a lot lately. Now, you might have played with OpenAI's ChatGPT that came out last month. Well, if you have, you might also be thinking about the potential implications that ChatGPT or technologies like it might have on Google search. Well, in this video, I wanted to talk about exactly that. I'm gonna take you through a new search engine called Perplexity AI that combines the same tools that underpin ChatGPT with Microsoft's search engine, Bing. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I have two screens here. On the left, you'll see Perplexity's search engine, which is perplexity.ai. The links for everything will be down in the description below. And on the right-hand side, I have Google. Uh, so we're gonna do a little bit of comparing and contrasting. And there are two things here that we're gonna talk about as it pertains to perplexity. There is an ask anything functionality, which you can think of as a general web search. And then there is bird SQL, which will give you the ability to translate natural text into SQL searches on Twitter. So first and foremost, uh, we're going to ask a question about tax loss harvesting. So we'll go ahead and put these in and let's see what we get back. Okay, now on the left-hand side first, we can see perplexity has a response for us, and we have two options here, a concise response and then a detailed response, which is, as it sounds, going to go into a little bit more detail for us. Underneath that, we can see some recommendations uh, for other searches, uh, what is the wash sale rule, etc. And you can see there's similarities here between the two. Uh, Google is serving us a summary of uh, the the question, as well as some suggestions for uh, related questions. And then now on perplexity, we can also see citations, which if you've been following closely along with natural language tools, uh, you might know that they are very good at giving us answers, but not so good about always giving us factual answers. So here we can see in line uh, our citation numbers. If we were to click one of these, it will take us over to the article that it is citing for each of these um, comments or statements that perplexity is returning to us. So, you know, between the two, perplexity is definitely going into more detail. And more importantly, it is citing a lot more sources here for us than, you know, here on, on Google. All right, so let's try another one. And uh, this time, let's, let's ask it a little bit of a nuanced question. I'm gonna ask, what type of engine a 2019 Ford Raptor has. All right. So pretty close to the same answer on both of these. The EcoBoost on Perplexity is uh, is different here, but it looks like pretty close on these two. Uh, let's go to the more detailed response. Interesting details here. It's just telling us a, a little bit more context. This engine is more fuel efficient than the naturally aspirated V8 found in earlier models of the Ford Raptor while also generating more power. Okay, good context to have. Let's move on to the second one. And I'm going to ask them both for a recipe. All right, and in this one, I'm specifically asking for a dairy-free recipe. All right, easy dairy-free rice pudding. Go more detailed. And then here on Google side, we can see that we have links to various vegan or dairy-free recipes. Perplexity is just giving us summaries of several of the recipes that is found with citations or links to each of them in line. All right, so let's try another one here. This one, we're gonna be asking it to give us a little bit more instruction where I'm gonna ask, how to tie a sailor's knot. So Google conveniently gives us a video uh, and it also takes us to the timestamp. And then let's see, so on perplexity, it is giving us some text on how to do this. And let's see if we click into the source. All right, we can see that these are valid instructions but maybe a little bit less helpful than, um, than what we were looking for from Google. And let's do one final thing. We're gonna ask it something technical. Uh, I'm going to ask it how to write a SQL statement or a SQL query that queries everything from a given table. 
All right. To query everything in SQL, you need to use the select statement. All right. Okay, so this is kind of what I was looking for here. Select asterisk. Um, should include table name from comma separated wildcards can be used. Detailed. Okay, here we go. So in the detailed one, we can see that it's telling us to do a select with the asterisk. Let's go ahead and check uh, some of these sources real quick. All right, great. Okay. Well, there you go. There is a head-to-head -head comparison between the two. Now, this is obviously early. Uh, perplexity is still in beta, but um, you know it's definitely definitely indicative of where things are heading. And uh, it is worth noting that Google does include machine learning in both how they are serving results and how they're basically ranking the results that you're seeing, as well as those summaries that uh, that you may have remembered seeing from earlier on in this video. So now we're going to take a quick look at Bird SQL, which is Perplexity's Twitter search feature. Now, this definitely differentiates itself from Twitter's regular search, and I'm going to show you a couple ways in how that is the case. So first, and we're going to search for top five most popular tweets of 2022. All right, and then what we're going to do here is with each of these, we're going to look at the SQL query that it translates our text to. So here we can see that it's selecting the tweet data, the text, and the like count from all tweets, where it's um, specifying that the year is 2022, and ordering by like count, uh, descending and limiting it to the top five. All right, so we have Elon at number one, 4.7 million. Then we have uh, Greta's fantastic tweet to Andrew Tate, which also subsequently got him arrested. So top two from Greta right at the end of the year in 2022. And the World Cup. All right, great. So now let's go ahead and run another one. On this one, we are going to look at accounts uh, that someone follows, but uh, that don't follow that person back. So in this case, we're going to do Elon Musk. All right, and we can see this is a much more complex query here. But effectively, we're selecting users uh, who are followed by Musk, but does not follow Musk back in return. NASA, Twitter, BBC, Neil deGrasse Tyson, etc. And for this next one, let's let's do a visualization. So this is one of the things that uh, begins to get beyond what Twitter's native search functionality can do, and that this will give you the the ability to visualize things um, based on Twitter data. All right. Top person who likes Musk's tweets are his mother. So makes sense. Then on this one, we are going to do average likes per tweet across the years. Uh, for Sundar Pichai, the Wall Street Journal, and Elon Musk. I'm expecting Elon Musk to come out on top here once again. Hmm, okay, so this one did not work. There we go, strike one. Uh, let's try another one. This time let's do a pie chart of uh, top news accounts by engagement. All right, so BBC breaking news, taking a large slice of the pie. I might have to follow them myself after this. And then let's finish off with a bar chart giving us uh, the top 20 accounts that Taylor Swift does not follow, but are very engaged with her tweets. All right, wow, okay, Night in Black, and a variety of others. Great, so you know, that is coming to the conclusion of this video. Real quick though, I did want to call out that uh, Perplexity was founded, or at least co-founded, by Arvind Srinivas, who has experience both at Google as well as OpenAI, and uh, has obviously been building a lot of very interesting things recently. And then um, if you go over to Twitter, you can follow Perplexity at Perplexity underscore AI. 
you can see a little bit more information about some of the things they're doing and follow their progress. All right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.